Good morning, my name is Alberto Conajero and I'm going to present the talk Visibility Graphs of Fractional Dyna Dynamical Systems, which is joint work with Carlos Lizama from Universidad de Santiago de Chile, Ainara Mira from Valencia and Cristóbal Rodero from King's College of London. So the starting point of our work is the logistic map that we have in equation one with initial condition in the unit interval and a parameter mu. It's already in, well known that if mu is between 0 and 4, what we have is a discrete dynamical system on the interval, but for cases with mu greater than 4, what we have is a discrete dynamical system that is defined only in the complementary of a countersect in the unit interval. So if we start with the difference operator delta, forward difference operator, which to un we have that is the, the difference un plus 1 minus un. So from equation 2, making the substitution, we can arrive to equation 3. So if we take in equation 3 the change of variable vn equal to mu divided mu plus 1 times u, what we get is the logistic equation in terms of v and with the initial condition v sub zero. So what we are going to consider is uh, the question two, and instead of plugging the difference operator to use a fractional difference, and to see what is the resulting dynamical system that we obtain. Observe that we, we compare the, the recurrence in three and four, what we have only is a scaling factor that is moving one system or, or make us to change from one system to the other. <coughs> the dynamics of, of uh, discrete dynamical systems is usually represented by a bifurcation diagram in plane. So in this case where we have this fractional system it was already studied by Bu and Baleano who introduced this in 2014. We have several representations of the diagrams for nu equal to 0 0.01 and nu equal to 0 0.6. Observe that these diagrams are in fact uh, resemble the, the diagrams that we have for the logistic equation. So what we observe is that here the chaos doesn't only depend on the parameter mu, but also depends on the parameter nu. So what we want is to study more how is this dependence in terms of these two parameters and if there's somehow a connection between, between them. So we recall that the idea is to replace in that operate in, in equation five and to put a difference operation, a difference version of, of of this difference operation. Uh, there are several ways of introducing fractional differences. In our case, what we are going to do is to choose the Caputo, the Caputo derivative, since it permits to e deal with initial conditions, and the discrete C that we are going to consider are the natural numbers translated by A, denoted by NA. Uh, Atichi and Elo uh, show that the fractional sum of order nu can be defined as it's indicated on equation 6. And here, if u is defined on Na, what we have is that we can compute these fractional sums uh, for t in Na plus nu. This result permits us to uh, study the Caputo difference defined as we have in equation seven, where we have the fractional sum of order m minus nu, and later what we have is the m power of the difference operator. So in this case, what we can have is the expression in equation eight that provides us an expression for the computer derivative uh, on the, of u and at the point A with the scaling factor nu. 
if we it was studied by Chen Lu and so that if we have the following fractional difference equation that is represented in nine with the initial conditions also indicated in ten, this permits us to represent our dynamical system, fractional dynamical system as we have in eleven, where we have the t is some value that can be taken in a plus n a plus n. And in this case, the initial condition reads as we have in expression 12. So with this new expression, what we see is that we have passed from the scale Na plus m minus nu to Na plus n. So when we have these expressions, we have we are starting also from the difference and in our particular case, the fractional version of the logistic equation will read as we have in expression 14, where we have substituted the expression of the function f by the value itself. Recall that if we make the substitution nu equal to 1 and n equal to 1, expression 14 can be reduced to expression 15, and if we make computations, what we have is that the difference operator on u one, it's exactly the part that we have the logistic term of nu of mu u of zero times one minus u of zero. A, a, one of our contributions of our work is also related with how to obtain or to express these fractional sums of order nu. In contrast to the result of Hatici and Elo, what we did is that we can represent this with the terms k power to nu, which are called the Cicero numbers of order nu. And the kernel k nu may be equivalent to be defined by means of the generating functions that we have in function 18. This is a very interesting way of expressing these fractional sums of order new since we can have the uh, Sene group property when we are making the convolution of the operators k alpha or k nu and in the result is just to have k time k power to alpha plus nu for any alpha nu greater than zero. So if we say if I fix some value nu what we can consider is an analogous of the former expression two where we have the Caputo, the Caputo derivative of order nu with this initial condition. And using the properties that we have before, this discrete differential equation can be expressed in terms of 20 with the kernel generating functions that we have mentioned before. So in this way, what we have is that uh, in this expression, what we include is part of the memory of the fractional derivative expressed in the in terms of the kernels. So the tool that we have used in our work is comes from from network science. So in network science, what we have are visibility graphs from for studying time series, and with e, e, what it be that this is to to express a time series as, as a graph. So here we have represented the time series. And what we see is that the first value takes a value a 0 0.9, the second one a 0 0.5, and so on. So what we do is the top of each one of these bars, we try to connect only with the bars that have a head which is smaller or even equal to this. But, no, but if we have these bars, we cannot connect this point to this point. So if we omit the bars and we represent this as a graph, what we have is that time series can be represented as this graph. The visibility graphs were studied, were introduced by Lacasse and others in 2018 and has been a very successful technique for studying time series. These graphs represent nice properties which are visually represented here which are that they are invariant by translation, scalings, and also if we have linear transformations, and in all the cases what we have is the degrees of the number of connections of each node 
and the nodes with which they are connected, they remain uh, as it was. In fact, uh, here in this representation, this comes from uh, a work of La Casa working with what they call Feigenbaum graphs. We can convert periodic points into periodic time series here, which is a periodic graph. And also, if we are increasing the periods, we are also having this representation of the graphs. In the case that we have the regions of chaos, what is striking and what it happens is that in fact these values uh, have some particular behavior. So the thing is that if we have chaos, the distribution decrease can be fitted with the, with the power law. And power laws are very interesting from the point of network science because they appear in many interesting problems in when representing the, the real world. So in our work, what we have done is to try to figure out what will be the exponent of the power law in terms of the scaling factor and the fractional exponent. And what we see is that there are some curves here in the region that connect both numbers, the scaling factor and the fractional exponent. So the thing is that in these points here, what we can think is that the behavior is similar. So it's a connection for obtaining a similar dynamics if we combine these two factors. Moreover, this is interesting because this scaling, this exponent is also connected with the Shannon entropy of the graph. So the, if we compute the entropy of the natural visibility graphs, we also have these regions of curves and we have here represented what are the values of the entropy in each case. So just to finish very briefly, we can pose the following questions. Can we provide some theoretical explanations for the curves in the picture? Also, La Casa and others link the exponent of the power law with the harsh exponent. So in our, our question, in some cases, our question, if this also holds for this discrete di fractional dynamical system. And finally, what we are also interested in is studying what is the behavior of other dynamical, fractional dynamical system like this is. Okay, thanks for your attention.